Beneficence. Do good. Beneficence requires that the procedure be provided with the intent of doing good for the patient involved or avoiding doing harm. Non-maleficence. Do no harm. Non-maleficence requires that a procedure does not harm the patient involved or others in society. There are different opinions about the concept of harm or doing bad. In healthcare professions, harm is a concept that worsens the condition of the patient. However, harm or worsen is not a simple understanding. In some cases, it's difficult for doctors to successfully apply the do-no-harm principle if their morals and beliefs contradict a procedure such as physician-assisted dying or abortion. We'll talk about conscientious objections shortly. Patient Autonomy Patient autonomy refers to the right of patients to make decisions about their medical care without their healthcare provider trying to influence the decision. Patient autonomy does allow the healthcare provider to educate and inform the patient using the latest scientific evidence so that they can make an informed decision. But the healthcare worker is not allowed to make the decision for the patient or force them to choose a treatment. There are two important principles about patient autonomy. Are patients competent to make their own decisions? Are patients free of coercion in the decision-making process? Justice The concept of justice is most complex. The term justice means fairness in treatment. On the other hand, injustice means unfairness in treatment and occurs when similar cases do not receive similar treatment. The healthcare provider must consider four main areas when evaluating justice. 1. Fair distribution of scarce resources. 2. Competing needs. 3. Rights and obligations. And 4. Potential conflicts with established legislation. Patient-centered. In a nutshell, being patient-centered means that the healthcare provider puts their patient's needs before one's own. To elaborate further, Sine and Sharp published an article titled Ethics, Risk, and Patient-Centered Care, How Collaboration Between Clinical Ethicists and Risk Management Leads to Respectful Patient Care. In the introduction of their article, the authors clearly state, quote, Patient-centered care is driven in part by the ethical principle of autonomy and considers patients' cultural traditions, personal preferences, values, family situations, and lifestyles, end quote. The authors continue to explain that when healthcare providers do not meet patient needs and values or understand the expectations, the patient may be dissatisfied with their healthcare services. An additional article by Linda Bell titled Patient-Centered Care stated, quote, The goal of patient-centered care is to see the patient and family as a single unit. That is, care for the patient includes the family, and decisions made about patient care include the patient's and family's wishes, end quote. Conscientious Objection Conscientious objection relates to there being a sincere objection to participation in an act by reason of beliefs being moral and ethical beliefs that influence one's views on life. Conscientious objection in medicine is highly relevant to examples such as physician-assisted dying and abortion. A healthcare provider's moral and ethical controversy and disagreement about an act such as physician-assisted dying and abortion may prevent the physician from engaging in such act, although it may be legal in your country, state, or province. In the case where conscientious objection comes into play, so does respect for autonomy for physicians. By respecting the autonomy of physicians, by understanding that their moral and ethical beliefs are incompatible with following through with an act, such as physician-assisted dying or abortion, the physician can recommend other physicians, or the patient may need to seek out other physicians who do not have conscientious objection to such acts. Scope of Practice a healthcare professional can only perform acts that are within their scope of practice, which is defined by state boards of medicine, boards of nursing, or guidance of instruction of the state's legislature. For example, some states in the U.S. allow pharmacists to prescribe birth control pills, while in other states of the U.S., prescribing birth control pills is out of a pharmacist's scope of practice. The same concept applies for acts such as physician-assisted dying and the scope of practice for other healthcare professionals.